agriculture microbiology is a branch of microbiology that deals with the microbes of agricultural importance and their role in maintenance of a soil fertility and crop productivity. How much they can able to make the soil fertile and how much they can able to make the productivity of the crop. So, in order to get a good crop, following things are essentially required in any kind of a system. A favorable genetic makeup of the plant is very important. That is, plant should have all the genes that are required to be properly expressed for the formation of a fruit, seeds, flowers and a proper growth of the plant is required. Second one, correct balance of the minerals should be present in the soil. This minerals includes both macro and micronutrient that have been present in the soil. Macronutrient refers to carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, phosphorus. Carbon is the one which can be taken up by the plant merely by a carbon fixation process since they are all photosynthetic in nature. Whereas the other nutrient are all need to be supplied there. And the second one micronutrient it refers to iron, zinc, copper, manganese. These are all coming under a micronutrient that are required in a micro quantities for their growth. So this is very important and next one mobility of this particular nutrient there in the soil system as well as in the plant system. How much they are all mobile or they can able to move there in the soil system. Why this question is arising is sometimes this minerals or this nutrient will be fixed there to the clay substance that have been present in the soil or to any other mineral component present in the soil. As a result they will not be much mobile. So their mobility and their mobility inside the plant systems are very important with reference to their availability. The third one is presence of beneficial microbes. Microbes that can able to improve the plant growth. Fourth one is absence of pathogenic microbes. Microbes that can able to cause disease on the plant system. Such kind of microbes should not be present there in the soil. So if you look into the soil, a 25 percentage is covered there with the air and 25 percentage is with the water and 45 percentage constitutes the mineral particle. The mineral particle is the one in which mainly inorganic nutrients will be present or the inorganic micro and macro elements will be present there. The remaining small portion of 5 percentage goes to the organic matter. Organic matter is again composed of organisms that have been present there. What are all the organisms? Just look at the thing here. These are all the various kind of organisms that may be present there in the soil system. So these all organisms will be present there in the soil system which constitutes there into the 10 percentage of the organism. Then the roots. 10 percentage of roots. Roots is the point which is already known for you. I don't need to explain. And the third one is a humus. Humus refers to some portion of the soil content that cannot be degraded by any kind of an organism. A organic matter portion that is tough to undergo any kind of a degradation is referred as a humus. We will see the detail of the humus in a subsequent classes. I told only the soil will be having different kinds of minerals. These are all the various minerals that will be present there in the soil. Sand, silt, clay. Sand is the one which is having a larger size whereas clay is the one which is having a smaller size and these are the one that will be proportionately or disproportionately also distributed there in a soil system. Then if you make a cross section of the soil system it will be just looking like this. Microorganisms present in the soil are all listed there in the right hand side that is bacteria which includes cyanobacteria, actinobacteria and all other kind of autotrophic as well as heterotrophic bacteria. Then comes fungi, algae, proteins, nematodes and viruses. Viruses have been shown in a very dull. The reason is Number of viruses in the soil or importance of viruses with reference to plant growth is very meager. That's the reason we are not going to cover there on into the viruses. If you look at into this diagram, you can able to find what are all the portions in which, which are all the type of microorganism that have been present there. Say you can able to see the root surface here and root hair you can able to see and then you can able to see the bacterial colonies that have been adhering there to the roots. You can able to see a Hyphae that is of a mycorrhizal in origin. You can also able to see a hyphae is of a actinorhizal in origin. The difference will be size of the hyphae. Mycorrhizal hyphae will be of a larger size whereas actinomycorrhizal hyphae will be of a 
very small size. That is the reason why actinomyces were also referred as a thread bacteria. So you can able to see some decomposing plant cells and even the clay organic matter complexes. So this is a clay structure. This one is a uh, large one, a sand structure and a in between that thing can be of a silt structure. So they are all bounded together there in the soil. Say for example, clay is attaching there with the organic matter complex and it is present there. Then you can able to see a fungal hyphae that have been present adhering to the soil particles. Flagellates, ciliates, amoeba, these are all refers to various protozoas that have been present there in the soil. You can able to see a tiny insect is also present there in the soil. They are called as a mites. Some kind of a mites may also present there in the soil. You can able to see a nematode. Here this is a nematode that have been present there in the soil. And this here also you can able to see a nematode. So these are all the various kind of microorganisms that can be found there in the soil system.